Hello everyone, uh, this is Dr. Harun here. Um, I've got a presentation today um, in which I'll try to explain um, the different features of a eukaryotic and a prokaryotic cell. Um, I'm sure a lot of uh, school students will be um, learning about cells and what they are um, and, and, and what are the different components of a, of a living cell. Um, so basically, a cell can be defined as a functional unit of a living organism. Um, um, it, it's like a small factory. Uh, it's got different components in it, and um, each component performs a specialized task uh, towards um, uh, towards uh, to, to enable the cell to um, perform its proper function. The cell function again is different based on. Uh, where the cell is located um, anyways um, rather than going into detail of cell function uh, in this video the primary focus is the structure and um, uh, the organelle composition of the components of a cell and their particular function within a cell so the main thing you need to remember at this stage are two things one there are uh, different type of cells um, first type a eukaryotic cell the second type is or the prokaryotic cell second the function so the function of cell can vary based on their location in organisms um, however um, uh, it, the common thing about the cell is that each organelle plays a different uh, a, a particular role towards the oral uh, functionality of a cell so the function the oral function of a cell might change but the function of organelles or components of the cell always remain the same. I hope that makes sense. All right, so bef before going to details, um, um, let's first discuss what are you know, eukaryotic cells. So eukaryotic cells are either animal cells or plant cells. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they can be either animal or plant cells or... Um, mm, uh, and these cells, um, if so, if we look into animal cells, apologies for um, uh, confusion um, and me stretching a little bit. So, but if we look at animal cell structure, if we look onto the slide, uh, we can see that animal cells um, have an outer membrane which is called a cell membrane. Uh, so, now we are going actually into the, um, uh, the, the component of, a, of an animal cell. So, animal cells have different components which include a cell membrane. So, this is the membrane that surrounds the um, separates the outside of a cell from the inside of a uh, the, from the that, that separate the inside uh, of a cell from its outside environment. Then the second biggest organ in a cell is called a nucleus. So it's a round structure um, present um, inside the cell membrane. Uh, inside inside the nucleus, there is uh, a small organ which is called nucleolus. Uh, it is here where the uh, geno uh, genomic material uh, is is, uh, is tightly uh, present. Um, we also have another membrane here. So the nucleus is surrounded by a membrane. This membrane is called nuclear membrane. Outside uh, the nuclear membrane and between the cell membrane, there are numerous organelles. Um, starting from the top, we can see um, there are uh, mitochondria. So these um, uh, organelles, they are called mitochondria. These are actually the powerhouse of a cell. They provide energy uh, for the cell to uh, function properly. Um, so just like we eat food uh, and our stomach process of food, uh, so just like so, just like that for a cell, these mitochondria are actually the powerhouse. They generate energy that the cell requires to perform its normal uh, normal function. Um, like for instance, in a factory, there's like a um, um, like electricity is a power source. So uh, this mitochondria for a cell um, it works like a electric grid to provide energy uh, to the to the factory, which in this case is the cell. Um, beside the mitochondria, uh, there's another organ called the lysosome. Um, probably it's better at this stage if we don't go into details of these organs, uh, these organelles, and we will explain uh, each and every organelle in detail in, in, the, in the coming slides. Um, uh, other than the lysosomes, we have 
uh, vacuoles in, in, in the cytoplasm sorry uh, so the, so the part of the cell uh, between the cell membrane and the nuclear membrane is called cytoplasm so it is a fluid uh, jelly like um, environment which actually contains all the rest of the cell components so inside this uh, cell cytoplasm another main, um, important organelle is the centrosomes um, and we also have the endoplasmic reticulum which can have a rough I mean the endoplasmic reticulum is do again divided into two parts one the first part is called rough endoplasmic reticulum the second part is called smooth endoplasmic reticulum uh, we also have ribosomes in the cytoplasm um, um, we also um, can see in uh, near the nucleus we all we can see Golgi bodies um, and, and so these are some of the organelles which are present in, um, in, in animal cell. Uh, however, beside these main organelles, there are other uh, numerous organelles that have been identified and they play a critical role towards uh, the function of a cell. All right, uh, so this is a cross-section view of um, uh, of a plant cell I'm pretty sure so uh, the main difference between a plant and animal cell um, sorry again this is an animal cell but it's a cross uh, section of an animal cell uh, you can see a uh, different view of uh, of the animal cell um, here again uh, it's a nucleus um, uh, it's a nucleolus with the endoplasmic reticulum rough endoplasmic reticulum there are ribosomes um, beside the endoplasmic reticulum, um, the mitochondria, and, uh, and then lysosome, Golgi bodies. Uh, this is the cell membrane. This whole uh, fluid jelly like um, environment is called cytoplasm. Um, yeah, and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Just another diagram of uh, animal cell. Alright, uh, so what are cytosols? Uh, cytosol or um, cytoplasm uh, as I said earlier so this is the uh, the environment of the fluid like structure between the outer boundary of a cell and, and the nucleus of a cell so as you can see if, if you can see this so if this is the cell membrane the outer boundary of a cell and that's the nucleus and that's the nuclear membrane so anything um, and so the liquid between these two boundaries is called actually called uh, cytoplasm um, a cytoplasm um, is like a jelly-like material, so it's like actually a fluid, a jelly-like fluid um, that holds um, other components of um, no, other component of a cell. Um, so it's said that if the organelles were removed, the solid part that would be left is called cytosol. So as I said, it's the it's the jelly-like fluid. Um, it consists mainly of water and dissolved substrate um, can be nucleic acid as well which are the building blocks of proteins um, so yeah it, it's a, because it, it, it contains salts and, and different organelles and, and, and other nutrients so it's a concentrated liquid which gives it like a viscous viscosity and that's why it's, it's, it's jelly in nature all right uh, nucleus. Um, I mentioned previously, nucleus is one of the main um, organelles in a cell. Um, so, nucleus is present in the middle, usually of a, of an animal cell. It can be to as a side, but it's probably one of the most prominent um, organelles inside a cell. It's it's so nucleus is like a brain for a cell. So, uh, for a human being. Um, or most of functions are controlled from the brain so in in um if from a cell perspective most of its function are actually controlled by this one organ which is called the nucleus um this nucleus has an outer membrane of its own that's called um a nuclear membrane and, and then inside there are there's a smaller organ which is called nucleolus uh, nucleus contains the genetic material um of the cell so the nucleus is the uh, control center of the cell and um, this uh, the nucleolus which is inside nucleus contains uh, the DNA of the cell uh, and the 
cell uh, and this DNA is contained in the form of chromosome inside um, these nucleolus. So DNA, which is um, also called as deoxyribonucleic acid, I will explain them in um, a subsequent video, contains all the information for cell to, to live, uh, perform their function and reproduce. Um, so it's like a code, like for instance, um, I'm not sure how many of you are aware of computer codes, but um, without a computer code, a computer cannot run. So exactly like that, without a genetic material, a cell cannot perform its function. It's just like a non-living being if there is no DNA. There is no controlling system. Um, nothing will work properly, properly if uh, the DNA is damaged or um, it's mutated. The proper word for damage in terms of DNA is mutated. So if there's anything wrong with the DNA of a cell, uh, it's not going to perform its function. Um, so that's pretty cool to know. Inside the nucleus is another organelle called uh, the nucleolus. And the nucleus is responsible for making um, ribosomes. Uh, we'll talk about ribosomes later, but just uh, at this point of time, you just need to know there's a organelle called nucleolus. Um, it, this nucleus can is contain the DNA and plus it's responsible for making ribosomes. Um, moreover, the circles on the surface of the nucleus are the nuclear pores. These are where ribosomes and other material move in and out of the cell nucleus. So, you can see here, there are small pores on the nuclear membrane. Uh, nuclear envelope or nuclear membrane is the same, th uh, different terminology but the same thing. These pores are actually responsible for transport of material inside and outside the cell. Uh, this material, there are different kind of material that go in and out of the cell. Uh, these material um, include um, messenger RNA transport from inside the nucleus to uh, the outside of the cell where they attach ribosome and then we produce and it produces proteins um, or salt um, or nutrients they can move inside the nucleus uh, for different enzymes to perform its function um, in a proper way um, other cell signaling proteins uh, move inside and outside of uh, the nucleus using uh, through these pores as well Alright, um, so mitochondria, sorry I apologize for moving the video towards a different side, um, but I just wanted to make sure you could read the writing. Um, so mitochondria as I mentioned earlier are actually the powerhouse of a cell, um, mitochondria again just like nucleus are membrane enclosed, they've got their own uh, membrane that separates the inside of the mitochondria from uh, the cytoplasm in this case, cytoplasm of the cell. Uh, so mitochondria are membrane enclosed organelles distributed through the cytosol of most eukaryotic cells. Uh, their main function is the conversion of potential energy of food molecules into ATP. In simple uh, term, in simple terms, mitochondria are the powerhouse. It's the grid station which provides energy to the cell. So ATP is the energy that the cell requires to perform its function. Um, it's the like ATP is equal to electrical energy in 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 cellular uh, terminologies. Um, Every type of cell has a different amount of mitochondria and there are more mitochondria in cell that have uh, developed lots of work. For example, uh, your muscles have more mitochondria compared to your hair cells. Um, other cells, cells that require less energy have less mitochondria and vice versa. This means that if you're going to the gym regularly, uh, the muscle, the biceps you have, they're going to have a more mitochondria because you use them frequently um for instance the muscles and legs will have more mitochondria because you walk every day and so hence they will have more um they will require generation of more energy hence they require more 80 
energy in, in cellular time is ATP, so they require more ATP, uh, and to produce that, they need to have more factories, and the factories in cellular uh, cellular level are called mitochondria. So more the uh, so if the requirement is more, the cells in in, in the muscles of you know legs and and, and arms will have more mitochondria. Uh, on the flip side, uh, here so you they hardly move. Most of them are dead cells anyway. But hair follicles or um, maybe um, the skin cells they don't require um, a lot of um, energy because there's no movement involved i mean in comparison to muscle cell so they will have less number of mitochondria hope that makes sense so this is how mitochondria looks um so mitochondria on the inner side have got these um these these spiral um spiral structure um, starting from the outside we got an outer membrane and then we got an inner membrane so this is the membrane that separates just one membrane separates um, a bilayer membrane that separates the um, mitochondria from the cytoplasm of a cell and then inside the mitochondria we got a we got Christie and matrix um, that is what I explained. So that is what it says. Much going to have an outer membrane that includes the entire structure, and in that inner membrane that includes a fluid matrix, a fluid film matrix. Between the two is the intermembrane space. So, yeah, so this is the intermembrane space. This brings us to a next organelle which are called endoplasmic reticulum. So endoplasmic reticulum is a network of membrane uh, through the cytoplasm of the cell. Uh, there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, number one, and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and number two, rough endoplasmic reticulum is called um, um, sorry, so when ribosome are attached um, it is called rough endoplasmic reticulum so that's the difference between the two types and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum do not have a ribosomes attached to them ribosome i'll explain later but they are organelles that are responsible for protein production uh, the rough endoplasmic reticulum is where most protein synthesis occur in the cell and the function of um, sorry the function um, of smooth endoplasmic reticulum is to synthesize lipids in the cell. So smooth endoplasmic reticulum are responsible for producing lipid content that is required for the functioning of a cell. While the rough endoplasmic reticulum, uh, with the help of the ribosomes, are responsible for the protein production in a cell. Golgi um, complexes or Golgi operates. These are other types of cellular organelles. Um, so it is an organelle in the cell that is responsible for sorting and uh, correctly shipping the protein produced in endoplasmic on rough endoplasmic reticulum uh, by the ribosome. Um, so just like our postal package, which should have a correct shipping address, the proteins produced in ER or specifically rough endoplasmic reticulum should be correctly sent to the respective address. In the cell, shipping and sorting uh, is done by a Golgi complex. It's the, so Golgi complex is the postal service. <laughs> it is very. Uh, it is a very important step in protein synthesis. Uh, if a Golgi operator makes a mistake in shipping the protein to the right address, certain function in a cell may stop. Uh, so what does this mean? All right. So simply, what we are trying to say explain here is that Golgi apparatus, uh, for instance, if cell is considered a country, then Golgi apparatus are its postal service. The letters that are generated by the government needs to be sent to the right place in order for a proper function to be carried out. 
Sim in the same way, Golgi operators actually carry the protein from one place to another place where they are either mature, the protein either matures or it performs its function at that spot. So it's critical that the delivery of its cargo by Golgi operators is controlled and is directional and is specific otherwise a cell, a cell function might vary so now you probably I, uh, I hope now you can uh, get a clear picture of why each organ organelle or each component of the cell is important towards the overall function of the cell so these organelles perform different specific tasks so Golgi its task is postal service All right, so I've mentioned ribosomes quite a few times. So ribosomes are actually, there's a lot of text in here, but they're actually um, the protein production centers. So it is here that the cell synthesizes its protein content. And protein is, is, is valuable for cell function um, and structure integrity. So ribosomes have two subunits. Um, the large and the small subunit and these are organelles that are responsible for protein synthesis the ribosomes are made of small and large subunits they get their name from their size one unit is larger than the other so they are large they're called large and small subunits yep that's what we said both these subunits are necessary for protein synthesis in the cell when the two apologies um so when the two units are talked together with a special information unit called messenger RNA, they make protein. Okay, the expansion is required here. So what happens is the protein production process, which I will again explain in another subsequent video. So the DNA in the nucleus produce a signal, a letter, it generates a letter, and that letter is termed as messenger RNA. So this messenger RNA or this letter goes into the ribosome and the ribosome translates that letter into a protein i hope that makes sense all right so some ribosomes are found in the cytoplasm but most are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum while attached to the er ribosome makes protein that the cell needs and also one to be exported from the cell for functions outside of the cell so this means that most of the ribosomes are attached to endoplasmic reticulum and when they produce the protein the Golgi operators is a postal service so these letters the proteins in this case are then posted by Golgi operators to different parts of the cell Hope that makes sense All right. So what's a fluid mosaic model? So a fluid mosaic model describes the structure of plasma membrane. Different kinds of cell membrane model have been proposed and one of the most useful is the fluid mosaic model. In this model, the membrane is seen as a bilayer of lipid um, embedded in oh, aqueous environment. All right, so this is actually a model that explains the structure of a uh, uh, cell membrane so according to this model uh, the cell membrane has um, hydro uh, if i'm getting it correct um, lipid on both sides and sorry hydrophilic or water loving part on the outside facing the water on the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell while water heat or water repelling part on the inside making a bilayer and in the bilayer there are different organisms probably we shouldn't go into detail here it's going to make you confusing uh confused so just ignore this part um it's just a model so fluid mosaic model is just a model which explains um how uh, components of a cell membrane are attached uh, are organized um to give to to ensure that the cell membrane performs function correctly So in, in so according to this model or even not according to this model but 
um, so this is a, a fact that uh, in a cell membrane so now actually we're going into details of cell membrane apparently um, so a cell membrane uh, just like the nuclear membrane we discussed earlier have also got pores these pores are called channels um, and these channels uh, in the cell membrane are responsible um, to carry certain proteins um, or other molecules across the cell membrane um, moreover these pores are responsible for water diffusion or nutrients flow across the cell or protein flow lipid flow cell signals flow um, yeah so these actually these channels act like a door um, to which uh, it, um, essential um, requirement of is essential transport between cell and its surrounding is done I hope that makes it easy to understand so apologies for moving the video up and down but that's probably the only way I can easy way I can do this um, all right so coming back to um, the different components of the cell so vessels vesicles or vessels um, I mentioned in the first slide these are other um, uh, kinds of cell organelles so vesicles are small brown shape organelles again they have their own membrane uh, and inside the membrane there is a separate um, cytoplasmic like fluid um, this 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 term the vessel means small vessel self-explanatory uh, this these organelles help store and transport product uh, produced by the cell um, so similar function to Golgi bodies um, the ves these vessels are the trans um, are transport and delivery vehicles like our male and federal express talk some vehicles deliver material to part of the cell and other um, and other transport uh, materials outside the cell in a process called exocytosis okay so you might be confused now so vessels are vesicles are also perform the same function as Golgi bodies so what's the difference hmm. I would think you guessed it right so uh, vesicles they transport all the different types of material while Golgi bodies are specialist specialized transporters for proteins that's it so Golgi operators transport proteins vesicle transport a lot of things that makes sense I hope it does all right all right this brings us to another different type of cell organelle which are called lysosomes so lysosome function is the cell recycling department all right so lysosome receives cellular and endos endocytos proteins or destroyed proteins and lipids that need digesting uh, these metabolites that results are transported either by vesicles directly across directly uh, across the membrane all right so it's a recycling plant let's assume a recycling plant simply um, any uh, unwanted protein unwanted particle that makes its way into the cell uh, it, it goes into the lysosome and it's there are enzymes in there or chemicals in simple terminology there that they're actually responsible for destroying um, those proteins or those foreign particles so that's the um, best explanation for these organelles sorry for that so these are some different steps in lysosome degradation so um, number one the ER and Golgi operators make uh, that's how lysosome is formed so this, these are the steps that are involved in lysosome formation so how the lysosome organelle is actually formed in a cell so the ER and Golgi operators make a lysosome so these lysosomes are generated by um, uh, the endoplasmic reticulum Golgi operators um, and the lysosome fuses with the digestive um, vacuole act, uh, and activated acids and then um, hydrolyze digest the content hydrolases digest the content if that makes sense all right so let me explain sorry endoplasmic reticulums 
which are the tubes or surrounding nucleus they make Golgi bodies and from there lysosomes are formed lysosomes have digestive enzymes and which are called hydrolases and they're responsible for degradation of unwanted material in the cell so material that a cell um, the cell identifies as unwanted and it wants to get rid of it to send it to the lysosome hope that makes sense all right so this brings us to a very important organelle uh, that is um, responsible for cell reproduction or increasing or the cell feature called centrioles so centrioles are um, I won't go into detail because this is a completely com uh, a very different and complex process. The centrioles are organelles in a cell that helps the cell divide into two and ensures. So, all right. So let me rephrase it. The centrioles are organelles that help the two dividing cells to get equal number of genetic material. I think I'm making you confused, but um simple explanation is centrioles or cell organelles that help the cell during its division we leave it at that at this stage and if you want more explanation you can watch more of my videos for that all right let's not go into these details but i will just read them anyway so the, cent the centrosome uh, also called as the microtubule organizing center is an area in the cell where microtubules are produced when an animal cells um, centrosome uh, within the animal cell centrosome there is a pair of small organelles these organelles the centrioles each made of a ring of nine microtubules uh, they are fused microtubules the there are three few microtubules in each group. The two central centrioles are arranged such that the one in perpendicular to the other. Um, all right. Now we've started. This was better of finishing it. So during cell division, the centrosome divides and the centrioles replicate, make new copies. The result is two centrosome. Each with its own pair of centrioles, the two centrosome have moved to opposite end of the nucleus and from each centrosome, microtubules grow into the spindle, which is responsible for separating the replicated chromosome. Yeah, exactly what I said. Helps in cell division at this stage. If you want a more detail, I will make subsequent videos. Please mention that in the comment section. All right, so cilia. Cilia actually um, extension of um, the cell membrane. So these are actually um, um, thread-like projection of cell that uh, that they beat in a regular fashion to create current that sweep material along. Um, these cells are. Uh, so this is not. Uh, this is a part of a cell uh, that is not present on every cell. It's only on specialized cells. For instance, the cell in the in uh, uh, uh so the cells in the uh, probably in the in the trachea um they've got these cilia so if anything goes into a trachea they can the, the movement of these cilia will bring it up so that's uh, hence we when we cough if something goes in like our trachea we cough and we can cough the stuff out and this cilia actually helps in that um, another example is the mucus that we that we get in our nose um uh, the way it gets up here is through the movement of this cilia. Anyway, that does not go into a lot of details regarding it. Flagella, similar to cilia. Uh, let's not go into detail. All right. Um, so, plant cell. Uh, more of the same, similar to animal cell, but certain key differences, rather two main differences. One, plant cell, on the outside, like animal cell, the out, the most out, uh, the outermost membrane is called cell membrane. But in plant cell, the outermost membrane is not cell membrane. It's called cell wall. So then you got cell wall. Sorry, it's, this is cell wall, and then the cell membrane, and then the cytoplasm. 
So cell wall is one major difference between plant cell and animal cell. The second major difference is chloroplast. So animal cells cannot make its own food. It relies on food from the outside and then it uses its mitochondria to convert that energy into the, sorry, they convert that those nutrients into energy. Uh, it's more like a cold plant, mitochondria. Um, so I mean, those, those, those factories are called mitochondria and animals. Um, plants also have mitochondria. Uh, but the raw material for those mitochondria are can be produced in plant cells by itself so it doesn't require anything from outside it uses the sunlight to uh, generate the raw material that is necessary for the mitochondria uh, so the organelles responsible for making the raw material from mitochondria are called chloroplast um, let me figure it out so these are actually the chloroplasts these chloroplasts use sunlight, um, water, and carbon dioxide to produce chemical energy that is utilized by the mitochondria um, to, to provide energy to plant cells. And then um, basically these chloroplasts are the, the, the factories that run everything, every living thing in this world. So plant produces, plant is the, plant cells are the basic factories which produce um, the energy that is required by all the organisms so plant survive on mitochondria animals survive on plants and we if we are not vegetarian we eat animals to survive and animal and we also eat plants to survive so it all comes down to plants to provide us with energy and plants rely on chloroplast provide this energy so chloroplast without chloroplast life would be non-existent all right so there are other specialized organisms in plants um, which are different than animal cells however we're not going to go into a lot of detail furthermore you can see that the st st structure wise or geometry wise the plant cells are a little bit different than uh, or significantly different than, than, than animal cells um, anyway let's not go into too much detail Sorry, all right. Mm, so, so the, these are the chloroplasts. This, this slide shows the structure of the chloroplast, the organelle responsible for producing the chemical energy. Again, a different view of the chloroplast. So chloroplast, um, again, just like mitochondria, has an outer membrane and an inner membrane. Then we have stroma and thylakoid, which are responsible for different phases of um, producing chemical energy. This, chemi this is the process by which it converts sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide into chemical energy and oxygen. Again, very important oxygen is produced by plants. It's called photosynthesis. And so thylakoid and stroma have um, are responsible for different stages of this process all right so chloroplast the cell organelle in which photosynthesis is carried and uh, this organelle um, sorry probably should move this so the the cell organelle in which photosynthesis take place in the, this organelle the light energy of the sun is converted into chemical energy um, along with the use of water and carbon dioxide and production of oxygen as a byproduct um, the chloroplasts are found only in plant cells not in animal and this chemical energy that is produced by uh, chloroplasts is finally used to make carbohydrates like starch and that uh, gets stored in plant chloroplasts contain tiny pigments called chlorophyll is responsible for trapping the light energy from the sun so more of the same that I explained uh, well the most important distinguishing feature of the plant cell is the presence of a cell wall again as I mentioned earlier so this is the, the, another most distinguishing feature it's on the outside of a cell membrane um, 
and this serves as a variety of function. The server, so the server protects the cellular content given, give, giving rigidity to the plant structure, provides a porous medium for the circulation and distribution of water, mineral and other uh, small nutrient molecules and contain specialized molecules that regulate growth and protect plant from disease, a structure of great tensile strength and plant cell is formed from fibrous, from cellulose. All right. Pretty simple. So just like a cell membrane, um, the, the, sorry, just like a cell membrane, the, the, the cell wall also provides physical barrier and allows transport of material across the cell. But it provides rigidity and uh, separates the cell from the outside environment. So in addition to cell membrane, plants have cell wall, the cell wall protection, of this is what we explained, so it's not going to detail. These openings are used to communicate. Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, so plant cell walls also have pores which are responsible, I mean, which facilitate the process of uh, the transport of material across the, uh, the cell wall or into and out of the cell. So again, there are doors in the cell membrane, cell wall as well, just like the cell membrane. Yeah, so again, plants also have vacuoles. They perform additional functions in plant. Uh, they're more of the same, just like in animal cell, responsible for transport and, and storage in, in plant cell. Uh, and so it says in plants, the, the vacuum may take up most of the uh, most of the cells, so they are bigger in size. So it's the difference between plant and animal uh, vacuoles. All right, this brings us, us to the last part of the presentation. Um, uh, which uh, are prokaryotic cells. So earlier on I mentioned um, the two different types of cells. One was eukaryotic cell, second was prokaryotic cells. So most of the, most of the discussion I had, uh, or I should say, all of the discussion I had by, uh, so far was about um, eukaryotic cells, um, which we, me, you, and plants, and most animals are made of. Um, but there are also another second major type of cells which are called prokaryotic cells. Um, so uh, bacteria, example of prokaryotic cells would be bacteria. Are there some common features of between eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells? For instance, for instance, both have cell membrane, both have cytoplasm, both have DNA is controlling material of the brain, um, both have uh, nuclear, um, sorry, both have ribosome, um, and both have um, both utilizes um, similar materials, nutrients like proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids. Um, however, the key difference is prokaryotic cells lack membrane organelle organelles, so they don't have organelles that have their own membrane. For instance, they don't have nucleus. We'll explain it in the next slides. All right, so a, pro, a prokaryotic cell, you sometimes have a capsid, which is uh, which surrounds the cell membrane. So in this case, there are three outer membranes, capsid, cell wall, cell membrane. Capsid is usually fluid, not as rigid as cell membrane, and not as, um, consistent as cell membrane and cell cell wall but it's like a slimy structure so it's, it's called a capsule then there's a cell wall and then there's a cell membrane all three function as a barrier and have and provide uh, provides get, gates for transport of material and so on the so from the outside is capsule inside of the capsule is cell wall and then from there is the cell membrane and then we have got all this structure which is the cytoplasm you can see there's no nucleus and the dna is open and it's present uh, inside the cytoplasm there are other organelles uh, oh, oh sorry along with the dna there's also another form of genetic material in in most prokaryotic cells which is called plasmid so these are um, smaller uh, DNA, smaller uh, genetic material or DNA 
uh, and they perform specific function and uh, provides, um, for instance, antibiotic resistance and, and other benefits to the survival of the, of the prokaryotic cell. Some prokaryotic cell will have a flagella, which uh, so, uh, unlike a uh, eukaryotic cell where the flagella was responsible for moving substance on the surface, this flagella actually is responsible for moving the cell itself because prokaryotic cell is usually unicellular so the flagella moves the cell moves with it I hope that makes sense so this is actually a, a table which illustrates the difference between a prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell so um, a prokaryotic cell so in terms of size um, is about 0.5 micrometer while eukaryote is up to 40 micrometer genetic material in eukaryotic cell is circular dna in cytoplasm so no nucleus while eukaryotic cells the dna is usually linear in the form of chromosome and is present inside the nucleus um, so uh, in terms of organelles eukaryotic uh, prokaryotic cells have few organelles compared to eukaryotic cells and they are membrane bound organelles as well uh, in eukaryotic cells there are many organelles uh, they are membrane bound, for instance, mitochondria, chloroplast, nucleus, um, cell wall. In prokaryotes, the difference between composition of cell wall, let's not go into details. Uh, and the ribosome, let's not go into details, as are different between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. If you want more details, uh, I will make more videos regarding them. So I will just try to finish the presentation sooner. It's taking longer than I expected it would. Mm. All right. So here, finally, just giving you example of different cells and how they look in uh, in different tissues for instance in um, sorry let's go back so in epithelial cells epithelial tissue the cell look like this which are more um, so these are animal cells you can see they're more uh, flat um, and, and uh, shape can vary this is one cell, second cell, third cell, fourth cell. That's how they look. So microscopic images. Uh, again, epithelium cells. So you can see the shape varies. So based on where the cells are, so the, both of these are animal cells. Um, their shape will vary to perform a particular task. Can be the other cells you can see different versions of it there's a mesophyll cells you can see they are different than the epithelial cells these are more circular in in, in, in this shape and the component like the, the amount of um, each uh, component of the cell organ would be different based on the function here these are plant cells you can see they are organized differently um, so each cell so these are this is one kind of cell this is the second kind of cell these are other different kind of cells so basically what the, the point from all these uh, cross section microscope images is that um, each cell it looks different um, it, 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 it the components are the same and it uses the components in similar way components have similar function but the cell itself has a diverse and a different function and, and which is why uh, the cell adopts um, its shape and, and the amount of its um, organelles um, um, to perform particular tasks so a cell present so a cell has present in a particular location has a particular function although the or the component or the organelle of a cell remains the same if that makes sense all right so i guess we should leave it at that um, so to summarize um, a cell 
is the building block of life. Um, cell can have different function uh, depending on where the cell is and, and, and what, what the cell is responsible for. But a cell generally have common components or organelles that perform specific tasks. And it's important to know what these organelles are and what their function is to have a better understanding of uh, cellular biology. So I hope this this video, um, I'm sorry if it was a long video and um, yeah, my, my video skill, editing skills are not that great, um, but because when I was at school, I struggled with it. Um, so I, in this video, I've tried to explain it in, in the simplest way by giving you examples uh, and in relating cell to factories <laughs> and postal services. And, and so yeah, I hope this will make it clear. If you have any comments, please um, leave them in the comment box. And if you've got any questions, um, you can email me or just leave them in the comment box and I can uh, answer them for you. Thank you. Uh, enjoy learning and have a good day.